Yo, 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 ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? Checking in with you for Monday. Man, it's been an interesting weekend to say the least. And what we're going to be going over in tonight's live, we're just going to cover a few bits of information on the news that's come out. What to expect going into this trading week. It is a big earnings season. All right. We've got Microsoft. We've got Tesla. We've got big players declaring their earnings this week. So it's going to be an interesting turn of events. U.S. debt ceiling has been hit and we've got the idea of a potential trillion dollar coin. Bruv, like, they say that they're going to take extraordinary measures to effectively prevent the U.S. from going into what would be called a default. But the debt ceiling has been lifted. It's already been lifted twice under the Biden administration. All right. And the Biden administration is suggesting that we go into a coin that would act as a bond for, you know, to reduce the debt ceiling or the problem that the U.S. has. I mean, come on, bro. What is the story? You've had some in situations with Binance declaring to certain people with balances below 100K, you can't withdraw it into conventional banks. So if you've got less than £100,000 worth of crypto in the U.K., you won't be able to withdraw it into UK banks or via the SWIFT system. But you can still buy and sell it. It's just getting it over to the currency. Euro, in essence, ECB has just declared that they're going to be making sure that they knuckle down on the cryptocurrency and put some more legislation in place. But that ain't stopping Bitcoin from rising. And in tonight's live, I'm going to be talking about what could be happening behind the scenes with Bitcoin moving up. The marketplace is not sustained. Debt ceiling, where are they going to get the money from? All right? The only bit of information that investors are holding on to is the idea of a soft landing in relation to inflation. So if the next reading of inflation comes in and it's lower, happy days. The market will continuously soar. My 8K projection may not be on the cards just yet. Maybe. But I'm going to still hold on to it. Sorry. But that's the way the flavor works. Only because Morgan Stanley is saying, listen, there's a lot of low cap stocks that are rising, which is giving people the motivation to start picking up stocks, which is why you're seeing things moving up. But it's a earnings recession is what they're talking about. Big companies are laying people off. Spotify cut 6% of its workforce. Ford cuts a majority, uh, not a majority, but they also cut their workforce in the Eurovision, in the European division. All right. It's all starting to come to fruition. Now, naturally, when a company cuts its workforce, that means they're not spending money on paying people. So that money goes back into the company. Cool. But that only means that things are slowing down because if you're not paying those people to take on the work that you are getting, that means you're not getting the work in principle. So it looks good on the profits. It's great for the shareholders. But as we go into the term or we go into the year and things might not look so pretty, Tesla's going to be declaring its announcement soon as well. That will be on Wednesday. And we're going to go into it. We're going to break down Bitcoin. We're going to break down the dominance of the dollar. We're going to look at NASDAQ, S&P. And I'm going to obviously talk about a couple of other things on why I believe Bitcoins move up. Maybe because of something else. All right. So if you are new to the channel, be sure to like and subscribe. We are close to that 100K mark. Make sure you like the stream. Hit the subscribe if you want to feel more flavor. And I'll try and do my best to bring that fire. Let's roll with it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are all doing well tonight. So let's go with it. Here we go. All right, then. So briefly, Bitcoin making a nice play to the upside weekend. Didn't really see anything other than a drop back down again. How many of you have taken some profits off the table? If you have gone in the idea that Bitcoin's moved up and you've got profit, cool. Make sure that you're taking money off the table. Let's have a look at Ethereum for a quick second. Where's Ethereum? There you go. Ethereum, choppy behavior coming back into a previous wick that we marked off last week. Cool. And then we've also got Solana making big moves. It looks like everything is pausing, but why is everything pausing? Well, look, we need to look at what's going on this week, all right? Tomorrow, we have the Flash Manufacturing PMI for the pound sterling itself. So go back into the pound, and we'll have a look at what's going on there. Pound is creeping up slowly but surely, but there's a lot of pressure on the pound, given that there's so many strikes happening in the UK that might actually take an effect on the pound. 
But more importantly, if we do actually consider what's going on throughout the rest of the week, all right? Thursday, we have the core durable goods orders for the US, unemployment claims, and then finally, the key measure for the Fed is the core price index. If this reading doesn't come down lower, then the market is going to then, of course, continuously go to the downside, all right? It needs to drop. Prices need to drop to solidify the idea of inflation actually coming down because then when the CPI comes out, it would reflect that prices have come down, so that means inflation should be coming down also. Now, the topic at hand, ladies and gentlemen, all right, this US debt. I don't know if anyone is fully aware of what's going on, but if you just look at this debt clock that you probably see happening around on YouTube, the US debt ceiling in principle was $28.5 trillion, okay, back in 2019, if knowledge serves me correctly. Now we're at $31.5 trillion. In essence, the US has until June to sort out how it's going to be able to pay, in principle, people that are owed money. So how are they going to do that? Take it from Social Security? They're going to cut it from what we call in the UK the civil service, the benefits? Well, if people are claiming less benefit, then they don't have to worry about paying more people. But we've had all these layoffs that have happened, so that's going to be a bit of a situation. That means that unemployment claims could come in more. And that's good news for the Fed because they need unemployment to rise. But we didn't have that problem before with the debt ceiling in place. Now, if the debt does continue to go up and the US defaults, that's a problem. Simple as. The economy will come to literally a halt. Now, in my head, I'm thinking to myself, hold on a second, bruv. Check this out. If the Fed was to default or they want to default, would that mean that 90% of those around the world work in dollars, which would naturally inflate the value of the dollar? Do you think that could be a measure for them to send the dollar up? Could be. But what do we know? We know nothing until it happens. I don't know if anyone knew that the debt ceiling was lifted twice during the Biden administration. That's crazy. What is going on there? So then it puts me into the perspective of thinking, hold on a second, bruv. If the debt continuously rises, there's something has to break. All right. Do I think they'll admit that they're going to default? I don't think so. If we go over to these articles over here, you can see Janet Le Yellen. She's saying can't prevent debt default if the US bre breaches the debt limit. You've also got this conversation right here. When the US Treasury exhausts its cash and extraordinary measures, the federal government loses any means to pay its bills and fund its operations beyond its incoming revenues, which only will cover part of what is required. OK, now, while the US United States has hit the debt limit before, it's never run out of resources. So what are resources in the US? How much gold do they have? All right. And one thing that they did say, <sighs> bondholders would effectively not get their payment. So if we look at the chart of the bonds, we then would say to ourselves, hold on a second, is this being set up to go down? Yeah? Could that be the case? Look at that. This right here is a huge gap in the bonds market. Some of you might see it on other platforms as a big candlestick. But bonds is where people are going right now, okay? Because look at the yields. Like, I mean, boy, you're getting 3.5%. Come on. That is a fair return, given in this current climate. But if the bonds, if they don't get their payment, the government now doesn't look like a safe place to put your money. But let's look at the market. NASDAQ, shooting up. S&P, shooting up. All right, US 30, shooting up. Volatility index, holding out. So then we go over to Bitcoin and we then say to ourselves, well, how long will Bitcoin be sustained for? Which will then lead me on to my next discussion. All right. Check this out. Over a period of time, we've had a lot on ransomware attacks and we know what these guys want for payment for ransomware. It's cryptocurrency. Now, this is me justifying why Bitcoin could be moving up. If we've got a terrible economy, all right, and it's not looking good. Where else would these where are these moves justified So check this out? This is what's been going on lately. Now, you guys may remember what happened not so long ago when the flight computer breakdown sows chaos across the U.S. air travel system. All right. Now, the system, the federal um, auto, um, federal aviation 
automation system, I think it was. Or federal, federal, whatever. It was to do with the federal, all right, with the Fed as such. Now, listen, that gets hacked or it fails, okay? Now, when that failed, if you check this out, it was around the 11th of January, okay, 8th or 11th of January, somewhere inside of this zone. This is when Bitcoin started its move up, okay? Could it be? that these guys wanted cryptocurrency as payment to release this situation that they've got with these flight coordinations and software as such, all right? Speculating, guys. I'm speculating. There was no reason for Bitcoin to move up other than if we look at vector candles or it's just the sentiment overall, because right now Bitcoin's moving up and that's all because of Twitter, all right? Everyone's pumped on Twitter. Everyone is pumped across the board. Now all the price targets are coming out, 29, 30, 40, 50, whatever. But what could have started that is what was going on in relation to all these ransomware situations. Look at this. A ransomware attack on shipping software supply, DNV, impacted a thousand ships, which led oil to be diverted for Germany, had to take a different route. So that's going to disrupt economies. Well, they only want their money in the ransomware, in the in cryptocurrency. But now we've got this situation. If you go back to what happened, where was it? Founder and majority owner of a cryptocurrency exchange charged with processing over 700 million of illicit funds. Now, everyone in the crypto space had no idea who this Bits Zlato was. I'm going to get to my point. No one knew who this person was or what this company was in the crypto space. But they've now been done for fraudulent behavior of up to $700 million. Now, let's assume that these guys running the ransomware attacks, they need to go and cash that bad boy out. And if this company is not available for them, what's going to happen next? They're not going to go to Binance and then say, look, I want to just, I want to exchange $5 million worth of Bitcoin. They're going to say, okay, where's your KYC, my brother? What's, what's going to happen there? You're just practically just telling them what you've done. So then could that justify why Bitcoin's Price is going up. I'm just speculating here because we've had no reason for this movement. Or alternatively, we go on the idea that Bitcoin is following the stock market. Because if you look at NASDAQ and S&P, you can see bright as day that S&P, Tesla's moving up strongly. We've got Nike moving up. Look at this bad boy right here. Microsoft, whose earnings announcements will be out. Where are we? Earnings announcements on Tuesday for Microsoft. If we go over to Microsoft right now and have a look at their status quo, look, trillion dollar business, okay? Earnings per share due in one day's time. All right, if we go to the daily itself and have a look at what's going on, they have had a decent time, but they too have laid people off. And they too are going to declare if the impact of the Fed's increases in interest rates is going to actually start to take effect on their day-to-day -day business. Well, it clearly isn't because these guys are actually starting to pick an interest in ChatGPT, all right? looking to invest $10 billion. So the initial public offering for ChatGPT is going to be absolutely crazy. And what do we mean by the initial public offering? It's when a company gets listed onto the stock market and they are starting to seek interest from investors. All right? So looking at the earnings itself, you can see like, look, Microsoft, and it's going to be after the close. So whatever happens in the market on Tuesday, just be mindful that Microsoft will declare its earnings. Now, Johnson & Johnson, big cap, they're going to be declaring their earnings. Will they see the same fate as Procter & Gamble? If we go to Procter & Gamble, when they actually declared their earnings, you can see bright as day that they have just taken a nosedive since they declared a minus 4% loss on their earnings per share. All right, so it's not good news. All right. But then when we just look at the bigger picture right now, look at gold. Gold is still sustaining this move and it continues to go. All right. Hasn't yet taken that key zone yet of 1937, but it's very important that if interest is going into gold, people are seeking commodities. Going over to oil, oil still climbing up $81. And if by the time the new CPI reading comes out, they would not have probably factored in oil's rise in price. So that could mean that the information that comes out on the core price index coming out on Friday, what's that going to factor? Because it's naturally going to look like it's going to go lower because it's going to be based on this period, last month as such, okay? So it's going to be oil is naturally going to be lower. So that's going to be pricing. in. So I'm saying that the reading could be less. All right. But then you've got Morgan Stanley running his mouth. 
And he's saying that there's a lot of short covering happening in the marketplace. And then, of course, stocks going into the idea of earnings is costing them a lot of money and business is going to slow down. Naturally, the market is going to end up into a head fake, which could actually lead the stock market to drop. All right. So where does that put you guys? Well, how many of you chat? What's going up? Chat, what's going on? How many of you are currently sat in longs in Bitcoin right now? How many of you are on the state of mind of excitement? How many of you are thinking that Bitcoin can continue further? That's what I want to know, okay? Because when you've got assets, I mean, let's look at altcoins. Jasmine, climbing up. Luna, climbing up, all right? USDT, consolidating. It's when it consolidates is when I start getting a little bit fishy with things. Euro hasn't really gone up. It made a nice little move higher, but then it comes straight back down again. You saw the trickery of Bitcoin earlier on today, and Monday is renowned for being a trap, trapping day. It's a false move. What's chat saying? Here we go. Short on the stock market. I'm short, seeking short. You know what? Let's just run a poll. Quick time. Let me run a poll here. How many of you are short? How many of you are long? On Bitcoin, that is. Bitcoin positions. I want to see this. Are you long? Long? Or are you short? Let's see what you're saying. Go on. Put in that bad boy. Where are you at with that? I'd love to know this, all right? Because all of Twitter is pumping right now. All of Twitter is going absolutely mad for Bitcoin to continue higher. But the problem is the marketplace isn't showing the true sign of that, all right? We're talking bullish markets with the debt ceiling being hit and the US has no money. Biden said it, we have no money, but we're still gonna be sending money over for overseas conflict. All right, cool. Like, where does it all add up? Okay, let me see what's going on. Here we go. What are you guys saying? So far, 341 votes. 66% of you are short. At 354 of you. Whilst you guys are doing that, make sure you like the stream, ladies and gentlemen. And if you are new to the channel, make sure that you head over to the Traders Reality website to download the indicator. It is free of charge. Follow the steps on the Start Here tab. And then, of course, make your way through and work this flavor. Get those indicators downloaded. They are free of charge. And there's a breakdown. We've got a wiki as well. And you want to learn more about the hybrid system, check out and join the Patreon community as well. All right? Cool. But let me just go back into the chart. Where are we going? Here we go. 66% of you. That's 432 votes. Come on, chat. Give me what you've got. 430, and there's 1,100 of you in the live stream. Only 300 of you like the stream. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. I know you're getting used to this new way of seeing things with the lives, but we've got to bring you that information just so that you're aligned with what's going on because any surprises. You saw what Bitcoin did today when it took a nosedive, yeah? All right, then. Still going strong. 453 votes, and 64% of you are running shorts, okay? This is what you've got to be mindful of. If everyone in this live, if you're running shorts because you believe Bitcoin is going to come down, I mean, I don't know what your time frame is, okay? But let's assume that you're running shorts because you believe Bitcoin is going to form what we would understand in relation to the hybrid system. This looks like an M formation, okay? Cool. So you are effectively paying for the idea that price is going to hold, not go any higher from this point and come down. If we go over to the calendar, we know we've got some interesting news plays coming out this week, 23rd today. So look, flash PMI for pound flat, and the Richmond Manufacturing Index. China is still in the bank holiday and we are still down two pools of liquidity. That means China hasn't been able to really move price and pick up crypto or euro or any Forex pairs because they're on the Happy New Year. So Happy New Year to all my guys in China. Enjoy the start of what is going to be a mad one this year. But your majority of all majority of you are saying that 65% of you are short, which is pretty crazy. Okay? Now, again, what justifies this move to the upside? Like I said to you, man. Do I believe Bitcoin can go to 8K? Well, look, listen. The logic says companies are losing money and the economy is slowing down. Everyone's paying attention to inflation slowing. That's all it's taking the marketplace to actually commit to buys. All right. It doesn't make sense in my eyes. Bitcoin has only gone up, in my opinion, because of the stock market. 
And it's just, all right, what, what's everyone else doing? You know, let's just go and buy. And then that gets fueled with social media. You don't think market makers are fully aware of that? Check this bad boy out. Look at this. The high block right now is showing more commitment of longs being placed than there is shorts. You go into the, the one month chart itself and you can see that they have eaten so many shorts non-stop and more people are going short. Now we've got $10 billion worth of shorts at 25K, all right? And just shy close towards this zone right here, you can see that we've got roughly around $9.7 billion, $9 billion worth of short liquidations at 23400 Now check this out. Down below, we have got a gang, a gang of longs. Let's roll with it. Let's count up. Here we go. 8.7 billion. 9.7 billion, 12.6 billion, 10.6 billion, ouch, 11 billion, 11.6 billion. And that's just all between the 17,200 and of course the 16,700 zone. All right then. So this chart tells me that people are not taking profits. If anything, they're probably adding to their positions. So why are you in the trade? You're in the trade to make money. Yeah, I get that. Cool. You want to make money in, in, the, in the markets. That's fine. But you've got profitable positions. So now you're looking for the glory of saying that you made X amount in your positions. No one gives a... No one cares if you're making money. And if it's more than them, they sure don't really care. They're not interested. If you're both sharing the same thing and you've both got the same amount of money in trades and you're earning, happy days, man. But let's be honest, those liquidations are probably going to get hit, all right? And what's concerning is people actually keep those liquidations active. That's why we always end up seeing them getting triggered. That's why I'm always going to say to you, take your money. Then you'll come to me and say, oh, Bitcoin went up to you, you know, and I paid myself. What a problem to have. What a problem. 95% of people lose in this game and you've actually made money in this game and you've got a problem with it. Congratulations, bro. You're going to keep losing money because you will never take money off the charts. And that's what's important, all right? So important that you do that. Let me finalize. 64% of you believe Bitcoin's gonna go short. All right, then, we need to break that down. Let's check this out, here we go. Bitcoin is stalling, all right? China is yet to open tonight either, all right? So there's no market from China, so it might be a little bit quiet tonight, ladies and gentlemen, so just be mindful of that. Go into the smaller time frames and understand what is actually happening here. Other than the reason of that ransomware attack, there's now cryptocurrency that cannot be sold, which naturally leads it to move up. All right. But for how long? But then has Bitcoin moved up because the stock market has moved up? If we're going to base it on cyclical behavior, look at the daily time frame for all my holders. Everyone's saying Bitcoin's crossed over the key 200 zone. Why is the market talking about a head fake? This is a bearish market, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. And it's just moving up. There's no reason for it to move up. Let's look at these volumes. Okay. These volumes are going down as it's moving up. I've got a cause for concern. I would personally prefer Bitcoin to come back down and hold this 200 EMA. But we've got the FOMC coming out next week, guys. And we know they're starting to drip the information as to, and the logic that, yeah, maybe 50 basis points is where it's at. But they're saying we're going to try and keep it slow. So let's just break down the problems in the US. We've got problems overseas. We've got inflation. It's still 6.5%, still guys. Let's just not hide away from that, okay? Are we going to increase it by 25 basis points or 50 basis points? Where, where do your head stand in this situation as holders of Bitcoin, all right? Where does it stand? I've had mad comments on the channel. People saying, you know, someone said not to dollar cost average. And now that was when it was at 16K. And now price has gone to 22K. All right, cool, bro. It's moved up about seven, eight grand. All right. Never mind. It won't keep moving up. Bitcoin has not stopped moving up for the past more than 15 days. And the last time it did that, that bad boy flew. Okay. There's something sinister about what's going on in the marketplace. And this is what my concern is. Have we had the full absorption of the problems that are happening around the world? No, we have not. 
Either the market is completely dismissing everything, which is what I do say. The market looks into the future. Because if inflation's going down, that does prompt the idea of interest rates coming lower. But we've got a debt ceiling. Now we're going to start seeing the extraordinary measures taking away from Social Security. Maybe cutting down on the defense. They need to find some money and there's going to be an impact. If they do decide to just hit the debt ceiling and that's it, they're not going to increase it. That's just going to flood everyone into dollars. If bold bondholders ain't going to be receiving their priority payments for giving their money to the government, they're going to take their money out from there and sit in cash. That's only going to increase the value of the dollar. What better way to screw everyone by increasing the value of the dollar? Because everyone's going to buy oil in dollars. Everyone's going to buy gold in dollars. Everyone's going to buy coffee, soya, crypto. That's really the way you make the dollar a super dominant currency pair. But everyone's blindsided by it. Like I say to you, no one is loyal in this game. No one will ever be loyal. If price goes up, that's it, I'm long. Price goes down, that's it, I'm going short. Forget what the naysayers are saying, you know? But looking at Bitcoin again, one more time for you, ladies and gentlemen. We've had consecutive pushes out, all right? Now, if Bitcoin continues to move up and news after news, because tomorrow's news play in relation to Microsoft, we might get some more movement higher by Bitcoin going in tonight, or it will actually just stabilize and do nothing in anticipation of Microsoft's news announcements, all right? The market is fueled by news. So if Microsoft doesn't hit estimates, that's a trillion dollar market cap company. Bruv, like the market will wipe out what it's done over these last few days, all right? So please be mindful of that. All right then, 500 of you like the stream. 1,300 of you have come into the live. Mad love and respect. Make sure you like the stream, ladies and gentlemen. And if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I've got to remind you guys, we're close to that 100K. And I'm hoping we do something special for that 100K stream, man. I want to do, I want to do some madness on that. Okay. I'm going to end the poll. 756 of you have voted. Okay. And the poll shows that majority of you are short. Now, most of you have come into, how can I put it? Most of you, like, chat, tell me how many of you actually use Twitter and how many of you look at Twitter and think, mm, he's got a point. Yeah, maybe that could be the case. How many of you actually refer to Twitter? Because Twitter is good at bias. Tells you what everyone is thinking. All right. You then need to take that information and relay it to the chart. We know that when price is rising, from a trader's perspective, when price is rising, that means people are being sold into. Okay? It's the only way it can happen. That's the dynamics of the market. If there's no orders up here, then how are we going to get these guys to pay up here? You see what I mean? Nope, no, nope, no, nope, Twitter, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. Yes, you are in your own bear bubble. <laughs> Last week, when I said to you guys about the 8K, if you listened, I did say, I don't expect it to happen tomorrow or in the next two weeks. It's a perspective of why I believe it's going to be the case. Now, if you don't believe in your system, if you don't have a system that you believe in, you're never going to make any money from it. That's the truth. Because you won't put the system to the test. You won't test the extremes. You'll just then end up being a system hopper. Like, you know, just be moving from one system to the next. You'll be looking for the system that said it was going to guarantee you 100% returns. Then you go to the next system that says 99% returns. And then we go to the 98%. And then we go to the 75% ones. And we're like, oh, which one do I take? Like, like I said to you before, guys, give you a system. Give one guy a system and another guy a system. Both guarantee 100% return. One guy makes profits 100% of the time. The other guy with the same system loses 100% of the time. So trading is not about charting. Trading is about mentality because price can only go up or down, yet that's a 50-50, yet 95% of people lose in this game. The, the, the math doesn't make sense. So the only anomaly in all of that is it's the mindset. If you don't stick to a set of rules and you take a trade with a system and it loses, what's the point? Move on to the next system because there'll be another system. And that's the problem with trading. There's too many systems out there that offer the idea of 
100% returns or 95% win rates and algorithms and plays. If you stick to a system, you can be a profitable trader and only generate a return of 45%. Yeah, do you understand that? You can be a 45% winning trader and still come out on top. Happy days. See what I'm saying? So, but Tino, the halving bro says everyone. No, 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 listen, listen. L let's just go on the idea of the halving. This is my logic with the idea of the halving. Just look at this for a second, okay? Bitcoin halving is going to be around March time, okay? That's what our logic says. So that takes us over next March in principle, all right? So there or thereabouts, okay? So if we're going to go on that idea, if Bitcoin shoots up from here, and continues to go, would, would it be viable for the halving to happen at 50k? Maybe not. You'd want to get it as cheap as possible. But look at where we are economically. If Bitcoin's following the stock market, because it is. Earlier on, we tried to eliminate that idea by saying it's all because of the ransomware guys have nowhere to get rid of their currency or um, get rid of their Bitcoin to exchange back to cash. All right. But Bitcoin's only following the stock market. In other words, anything that happens tomorrow and it's bad news, the market's going to react to it. We are in a macro-driven environment, all right? Debt ceiling's been hit. They're going to the extremes of creating a trillion dollar coin. Like, bruv, come on. A coin that's worth a trillion dollars. Where's that going to get locked up? You know, how's that going to be exchanged? It doesn't make sense. So, ladies and gentlemen, Moving forward, China is still off, all right? Now, if you're all coming into the doubt, I mean, I can see bright as day that you guys are running a lot of shorts in Bitcoin, okay? Be careful because the market maker does have a tendency to give those short traders the belief that it could come down and then they'll spike it up just to make you change your idea to go long. That's when they hit you with the button, all right? Ladies and gentlemen, mad love and respect for passing through to tonight. If you are new to the channel, be sure to like and subscribe and check out the Traders Reality website to download all the indicators. Other than that, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be checking in with you tomorrow. Peace.